prominent local dignitary, one Lord Grant, who just happens to be the government's chief medical advisor. Whilst I appreciate the need to investigate this fully, due to his position and influence in the nature of his work, it really couldn't have come at a worse not time. Case number one is an all-consuming five-year battle to solve the case of the ever-elusive Connor, who thus far have eluded Captain. A time was coming within a hair's breadth of my grasp, but at the last moment escaping from right under my nose, be down with vast quantities of the nation's wealth. The bravado makes a mockery of the law, and they treat every scam as a joke. The dress of clowns in the great bank heist of 1922, getting away with hundreds of thousands of cats. Then, in late 1923, they relieved every single passenger of the Orient Express of their balance. Not a single jewel, fur, coin, or coupling was left. Several witnesses reported seeing two nuns fleeing the scene, laden with sweat. <laughs> At every scene of every crime, there have been reports of little old ladies, farmers, fine gentlemen, always in a pair. Up until now, I've had no clue as to where they will strike next, what disguise to look out for. Until recently, I received one tiny scrap of evidence which may help me flush the map. Ah, uh, but now I've been ordered to investigate the Lord Grand case. One which may secure my career as Chief Inspector, but one which will put my investigation of these two dastardly rats back to Mars, if not losing my victory altogether. But I have been charged with keeping the peace of this great nation, and that I shall do whatever the personal call. <laughs> She puts 
multiple men to shame. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll just go see what the professor needs. Then I'll be straight back to take your statement. Statements indeed. How dreadfully undignified. A woman doctor. Damn the finals the world's coming to. Jeremy, dear, do shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and here's Nancy with the tea. You do know how to take your time, don't you, child? Well, don't just stand there. Sit it down and be off with you. <laughs> yes, your ladyship. I'm sorry, your ladyship. As I've told you before, don't be sorry, be quicker. <laughs> yes, your ladyship. Your lordship.
not go up to the house much then? Never set foot across the threshold again. It was all very odd, Mum said. Anyway, I can't stand here, gas bagging nosy Parker. Some of us A have got work. <coughs> Dinner dance, but with the departure of your father. 
we be seen with. So I have decided to host a little gathering, a celebration of his life, if you will, which also combines the reading of his last will and testament. He was such a splendid man, it seems fitting that we say goodbye properly. Oh, darling, chin up. I know how much you loved him. So despite everything, you're still having a party? <laughs> Not a party, Jeremy. It's a will read with some adults. And I'd like the three of you to come up with some ideas as to what the evening should contain. Invite some of the guests that your father would have liked to have near him. Now, I have a lot of organizing to do. Why don't you help Kitty settle into her room, please? Oh, I'd be delighted to, Mother, but I'm afraid I'm far too busy. <laughs> I really don't think so. Do you? <laughs> oh, we'll call Nancy, shall I? Oh, no, it's fine, Aunt Catherine. I know where my room is. The nation's in a state of shock this morning as the government's chief medical advisor, Lord Grantham, was found dead in his home last evening. The police say they have very little to go on, although everyone with close links to Lord Grantham is currently under direct suspicion. Tests are being carried out to determine, to determine the cause of death, initially thought to be heart failure. But sources now say that poisoning is strongly suspected. Cecilia, did you ever? Never. Oh, poor Catherine, what must she be going through? And to be considered a suspect. How dreadfully undignified. We must telephone her at once. And offer support. Splendid. The dinner dance. She'll have to cancel. She would never cancel. Although, I suppose she must. And I was going to wear my new pearls. <laughs> I've never seen so much green. I'm worried, Mother. I don't think Aunt Catherine will like us. Don't be silly, Aunt Mother. You're charming, fashionable, jiggy boy. Welcome to Grantham Manor, sir, madam, children. Lady Grantham will be along shortly to greet you. I'll arrange to have your luggage taken up to your rooms. Thanks, buddy. Nice to meet you. <laughs> and you, sir. Please go to the lobby. Don't mind if I do.
I have no idea, Miranda. All I know is I'm getting a step back from standing to attention for so long. How long does it take to put on a clean frock and powder one's nose? Oh, don't be so grumpy, Joe. Perkins, you've met, you've met our cousins. What are they like? Are they terribly fashionable? They seem very pleasantness, but as for fashion, I'm afraid my opinion wouldn't count for much. <laughs> Nancy, you've met them. What are they like? I'm sorry, miss. Lenny Grabman personally settled all three of them. And I was busy with Miss Kitty. Oh, lucky you. Well, girls, don't start. Have we got enough to do? <laughs> oh, don't mind us, your lordship. Just pretend we're not here. <laughs> I can hear them coming. Look sharp, everyone. Do come this way, my dears, and allow me to introduce you to my children. This is my son, Jeremy, now, of course, Lord Grantham. This is my daughter, Miranda, Jeremy's elder sister. And this is my young ward, Kitty Simmons. My Miranda, how you've grown. I haven't seen you since you were three years old. What a charming young woman you've become. Oh, thank you, Aunt Mabel. Mabel. But I'm afraid I really don't remember you. Of course, you're tiny, and it was nearly 20 years ago. Over 20 years ago, Mabel. Remember, you left before Jeremy was born. Of course, my math. Young Jasmine's ward, eh? You're the one who's daddy died, aren't you? You're lucky her ladyship took you in, really landed on your feet, eh? Perhaps this is hardly appropriate. Uh, keep your wig on, lady. <laughs> our parents may have been, but they were good, honest people who served us diligently for years. There was not a bad bone in their bodies. Ah, that's not what I heard. I heard her daddy's bones were very bad indeed, and his blood. <laughs> I heard his body literally rotted away. Such a treasure. <laughs> what on earth could cause that, I wonder. I'm so glad that you're all here, seeing as we really don't have much time until the will be reading tomorrow. Mother has decided to organize a little celebration of Father's life. However, it doesn't mean we have to do nothing. So, in place of the organized dinner dance, it has been decided that each of us who are willing come up with something by way of entertainment. Mother has told me my cousins enjoy performing, so I wonder if you didn't mind. They'd be delighted to, honey. I have just a thing in mind. Well, thank you. And Mother has invited some of her friends, many of whom have known Father for years. So I thought it would be nice if we swapped stories about his life and work. Oh, that should be interesting. And then, I have a surprise of my own for you all. But you'll have to wait until tomorrow and the arrival of our guests to find out what it is. Well, Miranda, that sounds splendid. You really have thought of everything. Now, if that's all, why don't we go into the gardens? I'm sure the children would love to see the roses in full bloom. Do you have any choice? I don't think so. I'd like to see the roses. <laughs> you would. Kids, don't start. You'll give me one of my heads. Come on, let's go smell the pretty flowers. <laughs> Good luck with your party. I think you're going to need it. It's not a party. It's a will reading. With some adults. That <laughs> 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 would be splendid. Mr. Price, would you care to join a brand new scar, perhaps? Ah, I don't mind if I do. It's a brand new expensive. Of course. <laughs> well, Professor, that was tense, wasn't it? Mm, hardly the happiest of family reunions. Did you notice how the sister got her dates wrong? I did. Do you think it's significant? I think every aspect of this case is significant. And I also think that this family have an awful lot of secrets, and I intend to discover exactly what they are. I think the next few days are going to be very interesting, don't you? Mr. Perkins! What? Er, yes, sir? Sorry, did I startle you? I'm going to need to take a statement from you. When would you go for a free moment? A free moment? Oh, I'm ever so busy. I would have to talk to your ladyship. Oh, not to worry. Her ladyship has given me a dispensation to speak to her whenever I need you. So, shall we say one hour? Very good, sir. I'll come and fetch you, shall I? As you wish, Inspector. What was that all about? Mm, just a hunch, but I wonder if you could call Scotland Yard for me, Felicity. As for this check, Jeremy needs to look for evidence from 1916, June. There'll be a photograph of this fellow's name again. You'll know what it is. 
Very intriguing. And what prayer are you going to get up to? Me? I have a whole hour to work my mat. Nula, I'm in meditation. <laughs> I'm sorry, my lady, but I think you want to see this. You have an invitation. Indeed, and was it for this time another five shilling seance for the lower middle classes? My talent is wasted upon the entertainment of food. Oh, no. It's much bigger than that. Did you read about the death of Lord Grantham in the papers? I have no need of the papers, as you very well. Of course, I am aware of his demise. The spirits have been unusually active for God to hear about. Well, here, read this. Is this right? They're asking me to preside over? Over Nula, you know what this could mean, don't you? No more ridiculous stage shows. No more entertaining the masses with table tipping and speaking in tongues. I'll become meeting with extraordinaire to the landed gentry. Even royalty, perhaps even the king, would require my services. Lady Matia, the young lady is in the lobby, and she wants to speak to you in person. She is here? Now? I'm unprepared. Young ladies enjoy tea and cake, don't they? We have no tea and cake, Panula! <laughs> oh. oh dear. Send her to me. The ladies Francesca and Cecilia Martin Smith, and the gentlemen Mitchell and Michael Ravenstone. Fanny, Cecilia, I'm so grateful you could make it, and I'm so sorry to have changed the plans for the dinner dance. Catherine, dearest, take the pardon and help. We hope you don't mind, but we wrote with Mitchell and Michael. We'd heard that they may have been coming anyway, so we thought it was a splendid idea to arrive together. Of course, the gentlemen were invited all along, so it's no trouble at all. Rachel, Michael, thank you so much for coming. It's a pleasure, cousin. Hardly a pleasure, is it, Rachel? Given the circumstances. Oh, no, quite right. Not a pleasure at all. But we are delighted. <laughs> <laughs> Far from it. In fact, we are distraught. Absolutely sorry. We are devastated at the awful death of Lord Lantern. Grantham and the horrible and painful way in which he died. In fact, we would rather be anywhere but here right now. <laughs> you really are an actor fool. <laughs> Catherine, I apologize for my, for my ridiculous brother here, but I do hope you're keeping well. No, not at all. And yes, as well as can be expected. Oh dear, did I say the wrong thing again? I'm always doing that. My brother does. Luckily, he's always correcting me, otherwise I'd get into all sorts of trouble. Please go through to the drawing room, where you will find my children and the other guests waiting. Mr. Hopkins will see to your luggage. Thank you, Catherine. Come along, Mitchell. Bring something. Yes, I'm so sorry. Yes, you're quite right. I probably need to lie down. <laughs> Lady Grantham, your guest. May I just ask how long you've known them for? Oh, Inspector, really? They are my honored guests. No offense intended, Your Ladyship. I just need discreet details of everybody here this week. Well, if you insist. Mitchell and Michael I have known since we were children, and Fanny and Cecilia for around five years. And when did you meet the Lady Morgan Smith? At Her Majesty's 1921 garden party. They had not long since joined London society and needed introducing to the right people, you know. They were so grateful for the leg up, and we have been firm friends ever since. Very good. That will be sufficient for now, Lady Grantham. Oh, may I leave? For very kind. I need to get these coal murders out of my head. I'm going mad. It has nothing to do with this case. I must con 